Dharma is your duty to your own soul. Dollars make bigger dharmas doable. Make the most of your spins around on planet Earth. Welcome to the Dharma and Dollar Show with your hostess with the mostest, Kate Stillman. If you're repulsed by money, success, PL statements, productivity hacks, don't listen. Stick to the Yoga Healer Body Thrive episodes released every Monday. But if you yearn for money talk, investments for your activism, real numbers in real time, if you want to get greedy for the good of all, stick around. And ask yourself before we begin, what do you want to make happen next? Growing up, I always felt like New Year's Day was a bit of a letdown. I wanted to align my vision. I wanted to align my body. I wanted to align into Dharma for the coming year. And it just seemed like there was just a lot of football games going on. So if that's the case for you and you want to step into the next level of integrity on this very holy day of the first day of the year, join us. I have a free community workshop. I offer it every year. It always gets rave reviews. It's really a cool process. And we do it on New Year's Day. We do it live together. It's very powerful. If you want to come, the way to get it is get your phone out, whip it out, and then start a new text and text the number 33444. And then in the subject, like where you text the words that you want to send to someone, put the words New Year's, N-E-W-Y-E-A-R-S. So again, text 33444, the word New Year's, all caps, one word, New Year's, and you can get a free ticket. It's awesome. Do the community workshop and step into 2018 aligned, envisioned your next level of integrity in your body and in your dharma. I promise it will be a blast. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. I've, uh, and I, I'm going to kind of maybe switch it up a little bit today and, and just have you mentor me through some, some things that I don't think I'm alone in this time of year. You know, I, I caught myself moving into like an old conditioned mindset of like, oh, it's December and, and moving into stress instead of looking at what I noticed was like, there's all this opportunity happening right now in terms of planning for next year and really yeah. seeing the benefits of the seeds that I've sown this year. And I have, you know, I feel like there's opportunity for investing in my business and taking things to the next level. And I don't want to kind of lose that momentum just because it's Christmas or the holidays and you know so I'm stoked to talk about this with you today yeah I mean I think you bring up a really good point because what's happening in I would say for for people that are more awake aligned making big things happen and, and into a continual growth path and identity evolution is if we look at what happens at the this time of year just seasonally and in on the on the planetary rhythm and not that everyone listening is in seasonal cycle we'll just we'll just, we're going to orient this to northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere is we have we're going towards the solstice right so northern hemisphere we're going into the winter solstice and if we look at traditions and practices that the human psyche aligns to at this time of year it's a time of of the the deepest reflection and planting the planting the most intentional seeds not yeah. we're not sprouting much we're planting <laughs> intentional seeds and so a lot of this there's like a selection of which seeds we're going to plant yeah. so this is what and if we're in this in the southern hemisphere we're more in the we're more we're in a different shift of of reaping the some of the the, the you know the sprouting the fruiting is starting to happen it's starting to to reap that in a in i would say in a methodical way, not in like a crazy, crazy everywhere way, but in a methodical way. So now let's back up too on a, because we've gotten so far away in many ways from seasonal rhythms as a global culture, we have a larger global cultural rhythm that's just completely societal, not based on nature, but just based on, on having a global ecosystem and a global financial system is yeah. everyone's going, you know, like all, all companies are going into their annual planning cycle which is aligned to the Northern Hemisphere Earth-based rhythm of this reflection period. So we can leverage this. Yeah. Right? And, and yet, we also simultaneously have this really weird materialism of the Christian holidays, particularly, 
at, at this time of year, which is like turned into spend a lot of money. Consumerism, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to consume anything right now. I'm fine. You know, that's what I was noticing. It was like moving into this, oh, like I, and, and believing that there's these things that I need that I don't, that we don't really need anything right now. Like we've, we, right. there's this time of, like you said, reflection and sort of a pause of, okay, what's the next, what's going to be the next best step in moving forward, as opposed to what normally has happened this time of year is I take myself back a few steps and then I have to regain that momentum come January because of the mindset of consume and kind of what's the word I'm looking for here. Um, <laughs> anyway, just, just a sort of chaos and then, and then try to get realigned come January. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Whereas again, what nature's doing and in this, in Ayurveda is I think very fascinating. This is like the deepest agni happens around this time of year, around the winter solstice this is like our deepest time for internal processing. And what, again, materialist culture and in the way that we celebrate holidays in the, in, it's very, it's very externalized. It's actually bringing our awareness outwards. It's bringing our agni, our deep fire of transformation, our deep fire of digestion as well, but not just digestion of food, also digestion of, of thoughts, ideas, our deep metabolism of being able to rehash what we've done in the last year and then metabolize that. So we actually, again, plant the seeds, project forward in, in very specific energetic ways, right? That's the process that's trying to happen internally. And yet externally in culture, it's like, I'm just going to grab some of the painted rocks on my desk. We paint rocks when we're in Mexico, you know, just, it's more of like grabbing all this stuff. It can feel like a stuff grab this time of year. It, like anyone who's noticing you're spending money on stuff that's really not aligned to your values. I just keep putting more things in my hands. So you guys get like, we just are like pulling more in, which is now distracting our agni, which is yeah. also our attention from yeah. the deeper processing. So then going into the new year with an aligned plan, that doesn't actually get the opportunity to happen. And we feel like we're three steps behind instead of three steps ahead. Yeah. And now we're at, we're with, our body because we've overloaded our agni and we're in a bit of being at war with time right? because we feel we have a lag instead of a boost. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I notice that there's like, uh, there seems to be like a presence of fear that, that I, it's, it's not just me. Like I've seen this, I've seen this with people I'm talking to. I've seen this even like at my yoga studio where like stress comes up and there's some fear about like not, not having done the things we thought we were going to do this year. And I think people skip over that reflection piece. I like, mm, I'm certainly yeah. skipping over that reflection piece. And where I'm going with this is kind of talking about like money's a big thing this time of year, right? Where, yeah. uh, and I want to make sure, Kate, <laughs> like I want to make sure that I don't do the same old BS that I've done in the past, which is mm -hmm. like spend money on things I don't really want to spend money on and not set myself up for, because like I said, I feel like there's actually a lot of opportunity. Like things are showing up. It's like, Hey, there's this awesome, you know, there's, there's an awesome opportunity to learn something new or to be part of something. And yet there is this there. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you yes. Know? Yeah. Okay. I do. Yeah. And again, to me, it, it, it's interesting. So I can all, in all courses, I, I try to tune the course members as quickly as possible, like to understanding their own values so they can make values based uh, decisions much more. Yeah. In a, in a way that becomes much more automated. And yet it's also a moment by moment experience because as we're at, if we're in a rapid growth path and we're in a rapid growth community and we're evolving, we're going to notice like, whoa, the world looks different. Every, every time we do the holidays, things look really, really different. So for me right now, it was fascinating. Like a conversation Winston and I had yesterday it was like, Indeed doesn't need anything. If there's no, if she has no, there's no material object that would enhance her life. Right. <laughs> we are that blessed, right? Or whatnot, or we've made strategy, you know, strategic decisions and purchases in the past for her that like, she just, so like, we don't want to do this whole materialism thing. And so what do we want to do? Like what's actually in line with our values, right? And we talk a lot, he and I talk a lot about like how we want to feel on a week to week basis. And then we align our, our choices in advance, right? So then we would look at the schedule ahead and be like, okay, we've been invited to this and this and this. What do you really want to do? I mean, and at the end of the day, because now we're in Mexico, but it's not that different when we're in Idaho. It's like at the end of the day, 
he and I have a really good time doing stuff. It's either skiing or biking or paddling. That's our, that's our shared experience of like that brings us more bliss than any kind of alcohol or food or party or whatever. And so my sense too, is people are where people get stuck. And if you're listening, it's like, just look at it. Just write down, like, where do you get stuck? Is it all of a sudden you're saying yes to things that you're getting an inner no and you're giving an outer yes. And that can be in purchasing something that can be in investing your attention and whatnot. And there's, again, I just going to keep returning to, there's an absolute undeniable opportunity this time of year to do exactly what you're saying. It's like often we're doing that in response to not facing some inequities, right? Some inequity of like, this is what I thought I would do this year. And this is what I actually did. And allowing a, a period of reconciliation. That's what digestion so much of digestion and absorption is reconciliation or like reconciling yeah. the choice that we made and yeah. how we're using energy, how we're creating and generating energy, how we're generating, creating tissue, how we're generating, creating waste. Right. And yeah. we're, we're reconciling all that. Like digestion looks like friction, right? So if you rub your hands together, like I'm rubbing, if you're listening and just feel like that's what digestion is, is that it's that rub of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So most of the solstice type practices, while they're celebratory, they might look celebratory on the outside that's happening as a response. The light that glows is a response to the friction of generating that internal heat. It's that secondary, it's that call response, right? It's the response to the call of going in and doing that reconciliation of like, hey, this is where, this is, this is where I'd be. And when we actually take time and digest the deeper lessons learned of the past year, like how did I grow? What did I learn? Who, who did I, you know, who was I wanting to become? How much of that was accomplished? How was it accomplished? How did I miss my target? And we, we allow that process and simultaneously hold the vision of who we want to become next. Yeah. And, and we, at the reconciliation is like, what, choices do I need to make in order to make that happen, given all these lessons learned in the past year? That's the solstice practice, right? That's a winter solstice practice. It's a practice of using the dark to generate light. And yeah, when we like, don't allow, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it's like a, it's like a mapping, right? It's like just having a look at where, and for me, like, I'm not hearing anything about it being like we're being hard on ourselves. Like it just sounds really lovely of like. Stay tuned. We'll be back with the second half of the interview after a quick word from our sponsor. Don't go anywhere. Many of you have been around the past few New Year's days for our community workshop on Dharma, the Dharma workshop. We're doing it again in 2018 on New Year's Day, align into the next level of integrity in body and in Dharma. You can come, you can claim your seat for free if you text the number 33444. That's the two fields. And then in the subject line, you put in the word New Year's as one word, capital N-E-W-Y-E-A-R-S, all caps. New Year's. So text 33444 to save your spot in our community workshop, Align into the Next Level of Integrity in Your Body and Your Dharma. I hope to see you there. It's a very powerful experience. We've had rave reviews in the past. I always get this like influx of thanks uh, in the beginning of the new year in response to offering this for our movement here for personal and planetary thrive. Hope to see you there. Being able it's to. It's really lovely. Yeah, it's really lovely. No, it is. It's, there's none of, there's no like hair shirts and. But that's how people posts. are conditioned is to like be hard on themselves this time of year and kind of abuse, like self-abuse keeps coming up where it's like, oh, you know, like instead of being like, wow, okay, reflection and, and what are the lessons learned and what are the things I maybe didn't get to do or I got taken in this other direction, cool. And I still really want to go back to this original plan that I had, but I feel like we, do, we, sit, in the, we sit in a muck um, and then feed the muck right? Yeah. Yeah. And then it takes so much more time come January where it's like, now we have to go back and repair instead of what we really are naturally wanting to do. Right. Yeah. Okay. So So we're out of flow. I explained this in some, it's on one of the podcasts on Vata Pitta Kapha and flow efficiency and in rhythm. So if that's not out yet, it'll be out really soon. 
Uh, mm. But this, to me, exactly what you just explained, I hope everyone listening heard the inefficiency of, of that. If we have that old pattern and that's what we do, and we use the holidays as an excuse to trigger that pattern, if that's what we do during the holidays, and we can just see how like, wow, that's really inefficient. And, and if I go back to like what happened in there, like we fell out of flow with our own values. Mm. Like our values, we may have a value, like I, you know, just a, a value around health, right? And that's how we, how we align the temple of our physiology. We may have a value around relationships and connectivity. And these values might be very countercultural, right? So the culture is doing one thing and our value does another. And at times like holidays, when culture gets stronger, and if we're not strong and centered in ourselves, if we're not in our sashum nanadi, if we're not grounded, in ourselves, grounded in our own values, we can get swept up by the values of culture, which can be dictated by very large corporations at this point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they, well, that really don't share our same values. And there's a lot of advertising and there's a lot of this and there's a lot of that. And there's a lot of crazy deals to spend money. I mean, it starts with Black Friday. It's crazy. It goes, it goes crazy through the post holiday sales, right? In early January. And there's, this, again, Instead of going in, instead of the money coming in, instead of the awareness coming in, instead of the intention coming in and aligning to like, hey, who am I becoming next year? What kind of support? What kind of relationships? What kind of incubation tank do I need to be in so that that happens? Because if I'm in the school of fish that's going in that direction, it's much easier than being the teeny tiny fish trying to go there alone. Mm -hmm. right? So if I'm getting super clear in that, I'm putting all my energy, attention, resources in, 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 in. The Sashumna Nadi is getting stronger. The internal Agni is getting stronger. We need less. When Agni gets strong, we start to realize massive gains in efficiency. And we start to realize like a little goes a very long way. Yeah. Right? And so we're we able to then metabolize some of the stuff that yeah. wasn't metabolized the last year. So we enter the new year with a much stronger intention, vision, right? The light is now going forward. We can see. Mm -hmm. And we have strong metabolism. We're in our values and we've aligned, we're aligning our actions. It's hearing true desire, right? Like that's what I've noticed is there is this desire that I can feel and that I'm, I want to be able to really honor that like true desire. And I'm not talking about like, you know, like right. not the crappy cookie. cravings, right? I'm talking <laughs> about like, there is this desire right now to do this little housekeeping and sit and then really see what's arising. And that was where, and I said this to you the other day, like that to me is, is neat that that's there so strong this year. And then I'm actually, uh, what was I saying to you the other day that I had this moment of like, Oh, I'll just do that in January. And then I was like, no, screw that. I'm doing it right now. Like this moment, like it's changing this moment. And that being able to really feel what the, uh, what the true desire was, was, and it was really for, like evolution or growth as opposed to, and really going, where was I last year at this time and doing what, and what was my intention for this year at this time? And, oh well, yeah, right? Like, and that's totally possible. And I have the support, right? Like I have the support of the right people. I'm in the school of fish. I'm where I'm- You're in the school of fish, exactly. So in that, you can like, you can let go into the, into, I was drafting last night, I was paddleboarding with my husband and we were doing some distance to catch some faraway waves. And I just draft, you know, I'm like, he's really strong. I'm just going to draft. So I drafted in his wake. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'll be like, yeah. Right. So if we set that, if we set that up for ourselves, then it's not all, it's not all effort. So I just want to go back to what you said. And this is like a ta is the first word in the yoga sutras. And it's a, the reason I clap and that's used a lot in Buddhism. There's just, there's this, right. It's like now, because the choice point is always now. So yeah. we make things really big, but it's always you know, so anyone listening, like, what do you need to do today? What do you need to do right as, you know, as soon as this, you're done on Facebook or wherever you're listening, right? What is, what happens as soon as that, like, what do you do? And maybe it's a two minute practice just to allow your awareness to go inward. And maybe mm -hmm. after that two minute practice, you open your calendar and you time chunk, you block off a time. Like I'm doing my solstice practice. I'm doing my annual review right? And you do an annual review on yourself and you align to like, where do I want to be in a year? Right. And, and you, you take that in and then what are my critical issues? Like what's standing between me and that? Those are your critical issues, mm -hmm. right? What are my leverages? Like, what can I leverage to get there to overcome those critical issues? And now you have some strategy that becomes your strategy. And part of that right. can be like, what, 
who do I, who do I need to hang out with? Right? Yeah. And What's cool? a, well, like for me, it's um, ta- like having a conversation with, well, sometimes it's you, sometimes it's my, you know, my people in my school of fish, but sometimes it's actually being able to sit down and have what I learned in yoga teacher training was like conscious conversations, right? Where someone's going to hold the space yeah, and just let that free flow go and we'll get so much clarity from just having somebody be able to hold that and even reflect or mirror or ask deeper level questions. Yes. And yeah. I would say that, you know, if anyone's noticing this time, you're just to kind of come back to the whole, um, you know, Christmas party effect. If you're noticing, you're having very superficial level conversations, just you're not tapping into that energy of the solstice. It's, it's, it's right there, right? It's all around you. It's within you. It's within your whole physiology. So just, again, like what Grace is saying, just like bring it, keep going to depth right now. Find the pit of your stomach, right? Find the soles of your feet. Find the core of those inequities that are, you know, where you need to reconcile what could have been and what, what was. And also the deep celebrations of where you've come in the last year. I had, I had a very amazing year and a very challenging year. I, and, and there's so much to celebrate in that when I can really get into now the tools, the assets, the resources, the relationships I have to leverage in the next year right? That I can mm-hmm. use as these like massive levers to make more of what I want to experience happen. And not just for myself, but for all those whose lives I may touch. Right. And then, and to me, it's so much more, it's so much more about that. I just, in closing, I want to talk a little bit about receiving. Uh, so there's this philosophy too, of, you know, in this time of year, of like this giving and receiving, there's a lot of exchange happening. And just to practice receiving, just receiving presence of each other, because so much of it is that when, and just to tie this back to Winston and I and Indy's needs and wants and her need and want right now, so much is, is just, as it is for every human being, right? And it's just deep, loving attention, right? And, and like, I can give that, yeah. And I can potentially give that in a way I've never given it before. I can maybe raise my bar as we all can. And what that is. And now again, our values are aligned with our, with our action. And when we're, we give attention so much through just receiving another human being. And for many people listening too, it's like to do this with yourself first, right? Just to practice this with yourself and really receive who you've become to this point in your life and receive what you wanted to become this year and what actions you took, what worked out the way you wanted it, what didn't just giving yourself that receiving the past, right? You're giving to yourself. Did you want to say something on the change maker challenge? I'm so happy she showed up right in that moment. <laughs> Hi, Indy. What's that? Nope. I'll let you know when she does. Really? Yeah. Oh, check. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she wants to talk to you. Yeah. All right. Any closing thoughts? Well, my, my offer that I, I hope people will receive is, is that I'm, I'm really enjoying having these conversations with people because I totally get it. And it's, it's really, I, I love being part of the planning piece and the reflection piece. And so I'm, I'm this month so far, I mean, we're almost midway through the month. It's just been really cool to hear where people are at and, and help, help be there for the process of reflection. And so I still, I opened my calendar up um, a little bit more because there's lots of conversations coming in and happening and I'm really excited to be able to be there in that moment with people. So get on Take the phone advantage. And let's have this conversation. Cool. Well, this was really good. This was so helpful. I got super relaxed there at the, <laughs> <sighs> that's a good thought. Like really, yeah. right? Like that's, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. So for people to talk to you, it's, it's yogahealthcoaching.com. Oh, yeah. Have a conversation. Yeah. Uh, I'll put the link underneath here. And then, okay. so yogahealthing.com slash have a conversation. Okay. Right. Yeah, There's a great. slash in there. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to end too, just saying like, do it, you guys. Like as soon as you hang up, take a moment and then open your calendar and give yourself that time. And as you do, receive what's happened. And then notice 
realigning to values, right? How, how you want to do the next, how you want to do the next couple of weeks, what seeds you want to plant the next couple of years, what school you want to put yourself in, what, you know, school of fish you want to be in so that you can catch the wave of that larger momentum. I swear this stuff really, really works. Namaste. Thank you for your vulnerability. It's yogahealthcoaching.com slash have dash a dash conversation. And I'll put it under here. Yep. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yoga Healer Real Life Show with Kate Stillman. Yoga Healer.